everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Welcome to today's video. This is the five weirdest contemporary pieces that I have played. The craziest performances that I have done on stage. I love contemporary music and I've been trying to kind of bring you all into that in a gentle way with the pieces that are contemporary but sound very beautiful. And actually you were also asking, yeah, but what about the really weird ones? So we're gonna get into that today. First, I want to thank all of the people who entered my giveaway to celebrate reaching 20,000 subscribers. And I'm going to announce the winner. Hundreds of you entered and all gave your ideas for videos. There are so many. It was really interesting to read and by far the most requests were for, let's see, medieval music, folk music, rock ornamentation, um, more videos for beginners. These are all things that I'm definitely going to get into. I do make my videos quite far in advance at the moment, so please be patient, but I have taken all of your suggestions on board. And without further ado, the winner of the giveaway who will win a Team Recorder goodie bag with the Team Recorder t-shirt and bag and stationery, as well as their choice of a plastic soprano or alto recorder is Christian Ferris. So let's get into the video, the five weirdest contemporary performances that I have done. Now a little bit of an introduction, I originally moved to Amsterdam to study the recorder and contemporary music in particular because I really love it. I love working with composers to make new pieces. Now contemporary music, a lot of people comment on my videos and say, oh that's weird, what's the point, why does it exist? But I think it's really important to show the whole gamut of music and of art. There is so much music out there that is simply beautiful or pretty or impressive or virtuosic and that definitely has a place but contemporary music um, a lot of it exists for a different reason but contemporary music can be really expressive in a different way rather than being super pretty and beautiful it can be challenging it can make you think it can be uncomfortable and difficult and weird but that's also part of the beauty of it before dismissing a piece of contemporary music it's important to also look at its context, what is it trying to say, what is it reacting to or reacting against. These can be really important things that can help us to understand the performance. And the other thing about contemporary music is that it changes and develops all the time, just like yourself as a performer. A lot of the performances you're going to see in this video I made as a student, that is also a time when you are experimenting and trying new things out and pushing your own boundaries. So it's not all necessarily things that I would make or do today, a few years on, but yeah, that is life. So today I'm going to take you through five pieces that I've really enjoyed performing, though they're quite strange. These are, you are going to see short clips out of context, so it might be like, what the hell is she doing? But yeah. The first piece is called Tick by Anthony Lee Dunstan. It was composed in 2013 for Pet Sold Contrabass Recorder and Electronics. Anthony and I worked together on this piece and we were inspired by all the kind of nervous habits that classical musicians have when they're on stage. So all of the kind of things we do when we go on before we perform that kind of are around the music itself. And we also really wanted to get into the special virtuosic sound qualities of the contrabass pet sold recorder. It's kind of deep almost human, inhuman breathings and mutterings that you can make with that. And we wanted to look at that in a humorous way, but weirdly this piece kind of got darker and more and more scary until it uh, was the performance that you are going to see a little bit of here. I'm going 
going to talk about is on this list because it is the most crazy difficult piece that I have ever played. It's called Liturgy of Darkness 5 by Raphael Reiner and is for the solo tenor recorder and voice. And for anybody who says that the recorder is an easy instrument, they should just check out this piece because it has a range of over three octaves in seven different microtonal scales with the most complex polyrhythms you have ever seen for a solo recorder line and a completely different vocal line at the same time. And the funny thing is the result doesn't sound that difficult. It doesn't sound like you're trying to do a million and one rhythmic and microtonal things at once. But in order for it to really work, you have to have it really accurate. I'm going to talk about is a whole music theatre production called We Are Golden. I was involved in We Are Golden with my trio Axolot because one of my colleagues in the trio was graduating from a master's in music theatre performance and this production was her like graduation show. It was so much fun to make. We made this production from scratch with a whole team of musicians, artists, scenographers, dramaturgs, actors, dancers and the great thing was that as a musician, you don't only have to work with other musicians. I really like to work in an interdisciplinary way to make music theatre. So it has all these different um, influences. We Are Golden is based on the Greek story about King Midas. Everything he touches turns to gold. And it was, <laughs> looking back, it's quite studenty. We had like a pop medley in there. We spent quite a lot of time walking around in our underwear. We painted ourselves gold. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to make and to perform and you're gonna see a couple of little snippets here. production is when we invited each time someone from the audience to come on stage and eat a bowl of pudding. Performance number four is a music theatre work that I made with a composer called Felipe Ignacio Noriega. Felipe and I worked together on a lot of different projects. I think we made like six or seven pieces and this piece is called Bo is Burning. So Felipe and I worked together combining recorder with traditional English clog dance, a kind of percussion where my feet become uh, percussion instruments and live electronics. And our whole thing was that we tried to do this on as little budget as possible. So we use like hack technology and old bits of electronics that we found and Felipe put together. These are my clogs. So I was playing the recorder with my hands and clog dancing with my feet. Bowers Burning is all about exploring queer sexuality kind of through the eyes of our teenage selves and we really wanted to make a piece that also encompasses the joy in all of this and not only you know the angst and I guess this piece makes the list because looking back clock dancing around singing karaoke with my recorder in my bra and a beard is a little bit more weird than playing back cantatas. last 
piece on my list is here because it is the one that has brought me the most significant injury. Um, during my masters I worked a lot with combining the recorder and clog dance and I worked with a composer called Igor Yofa. He wrote a piece for me called Quartet where the quartet refers to my two feet and playing the soprano and sopranino recorder at the same time with four different independent lines. Spoiler alert, if you play two very high recorders at the same time you get really crazy overtones and they were also written into the piece. I had a recording of this piece to show you but I don't we never recorded it but while I was practicing it so I was blasting these high notes on the two recorders I was dancing at the same time on a metal plate because we wanted it to be really loud and I was going so hard I suddenly had a nosebleed this piece literally broke my head to be honest, I don't know how that happened. I have never given myself before or since a nosebleed through practicing, but this piece was pretty intense. So those are probably the five weirdest contemporary performances that I have done. They were all a lot of fun. And I love performing this weird stuff as much as I love performing beautiful Renaissance consort music or Baroque or whatever. <sighs> So I guess what I'm saying people is don't be afraid to let your weird flag fly. Don't be afraid of what other people are gonna think of you. If you wanna try something out or express something, then go for it. Next week, we're gonna be heading back into some very safe territory. So I hope I've not scared you too much. Um, as always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. If you would like to check out the Team Recorder web shop, then you can do that over here. And over here is a link to how to get into contemporary techniques on the recorder. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.